So the first Ascendant just received its biggest update by far, and this game keeps improving. We've also got some new changes to our Descendants as well. These are super noteworthy. They also changed, yes, some of the farming and drop rates, but also we're gonna talk about some teases about the next patch. This is really cool stuff. Here it is as summarized by the first Ascendant official post, but we're gonna go super detailed into this and talk about some of the most significant changes because of the community is definitely celebrating today. But you know what? Check this out right here. So you guys know I've been very busy in the first Ascendant chasing the next big thing. And I'll admit it, I do not want to have to cook an entire meal and buying food can get very expensive. So that's why I wanted to tell you about HelloFresh, a cost-effective, healthy, and easy alternative to those expensive groceries. Instead of waiting in line at the grocery store to ultimately make a mess in your own kitchen, you can just have your food delivered right to you. There's a variety in HelloFresh's meal plans as well. You can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner all covered, and you never have to worry about getting bored. Choose from over 50 weekly recipes and over 100 curated picks from the HelloFresh market. Ingredients travel from the farm to your door so you know they're fresh. So join me right now and don't worry about a messy kitchen. Save time and money. Click that link in the description below and use my code OWGJUL10 and receive 10 free meals plus free appetizers for life while subscription is active if you're in the USA. Outside of the USA, well, the local discount will apply instead. So click that link right now in the description below to get started and a very special thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. But let's dive straight into this blog post. First, we're gonna start out with the highlights, what the community is really celebrating with the changes. Check it out, the best change in Hotfix 103 as you can see right here and the comment says this showing the amorph materials you have and the amount of shards you have is the single best change in this patch by far that type of feedback is huge but that's not all check it out right here it says these devs are actually based as hell why can't the whole gaming industry be more like this transparency and actually listening to the community feedback and acting upon it on a reasonable timeline is something that is absolutely lacking from other companies. And I did not expect this from Naxon. And it goes to show the patch notes here. It says this, when completing a void fragment mission obtaining two types of void shards, the amount obtained has increased by approximately 1.5 times. Void fusion reactor mission tooltip has been updated to display the number of void shards as well. Added linked amorphous material to void fusion reactor mission tooltip Void shard attribute will now be displayed on the map directly. And then it says this, we discovered and fixed an issue where a party member's abort mission system was being exploited to repeatedly play the void fusion reactor without consuming any shards. While addressing this glitch, we also considered why players might resort to using it. We realized that the transition from shard farming to actual void fusion reactor missions was quite inconvenient and tedious. Therefore, we not only fixed the bug, but also increased the amount of void shards obtained and improve the farming process to make it more convenient. Please wait a little longer as we will significantly improve the fragment farming routes in the upcoming week five update scheduled for August 1st. The dev team will continue to learn and grow from your playing experiences. We will always listen to your valuable feedback and strive to provide a better gaming environment. So they're already teasing stuff that's coming up here. Improving the farming uh, continuously throughout our journey here with the first sentence. So that's great to see, but let's head on over to the actual blog post, shall we? So let's read up and get into some of the details. So, and here it is. It says a system message has been added to make it easier to check the down, but now out status of allies and an extra measure has been added to the party members UI. Now reduce the research completion visual effects during uh, duration for materials frequently used in research and then away from keyboard AFK has been added to the player report menu. Now, here's some comments about the AFK situation because it has been quite the situation. It says, we have been keeping a close eye on recent trends regarding AFK and we agree that AFK hinders the gameplay for other players. However, we believe that a cautious approach is required in this manner. This is because AFK judgment mechanisms can sometimes be bypassed with simple shooting or moving actions and the AFK kick system can be exploited for other purposes. First, we're trying to learn the patterns of AFK players with AFK reports. Through this, we plan to collect this information necessary to separate AFK players in matchmaking and prepare an appropriate measure in the future. We're considering ways to resolve the AFK issue so that everyone can enjoy the game together. We ask you to respect other players in the meantime. And if you have an idea on this matter, let us know. I feel like they're handling this 
with such maturity compared to what I've seen in the past, instead of just trying to find like the quick and easy solution that could potentially absolutely upset the balance of the game, they're taking their time. They're actually going to be researching what to do here. I have to say kudos to the dev team for this big time. Now, also, as we continue on, it says this right here. The UI has been updated so that major rewards obtained from chain quests that have already been cleared are checked in the quest list. Nice. A function has been added to view acquisition information directly in the target section of the library. And they did fix an issue of scrolling to the top when moving from the target item of the library to the corresponding item list. Added firearm types and round types in the library weapon list. And they also fixed an issue uh, where a player join the void fusion reactor could use the reconstructing device even if there was no void char after completing the mission so yeah all around some good adjustments right there but we got to continue onward to what they did with the descendants they actually updated some of the descendants as well so it goes on to say this thrill bomb and lightning emission with the ultimate bunny high voltage module will now target nearby targets rather than random targets so that's actually like kind of like a buff i guess you would say Allergy of Reconstruction Serum of Eugen now applies to Colossus as well. Ultimate Bunny Electric Charge, High Voltage, and Bunny Electric Condense sound effects have been changed. Use Bunny skills to inflict electrocution on enemies has been removed from the second and third stage evolution condition of the Bunny Evolving Skin, Speedy Awakened 1. Hmm, let me know what you guys think of that one. And some updates to Infiltration Operation Missions. You can now view mission results through Escape Menu after completing an operation. The time limit for destroying the Iron Heart has been removed in the infra Infiltration Operation Fortress, part of the Fortress. The location of the supply droid in the Infiltration Operation Fortress Quarantine Zone has been moved to the Battle Zone, making it easier to supply bullets. Now, for missions, they updated these as well. It says, the position of immunity spheres of named monsters will not change anymore as the monsters move or rotate. The sequential sphere type of the named immunity of alternate hand of the Sastra that appears, hopefully I pronounced that right, that appears in White Knight Gulch. Eye of the Truth has been updated. And then for field stuff, it says the drop quantity on hard difficulty has been increased by approximately 1.5. So buff there to those type of missions. And then miscellaneous. The stack limit for consumable items has been increased from 1 million to 100 million. So that's something to celebrate. And updated some icon images. And when they mean this, of course, there's some developer notes. They got called out for icons being far too similar to Destiny. And they did say that they developed this game with uh, respect towards other famous looter shooters. So they want to still respect them and they're going to update it to have a difference between, you know, like Destiny and the first Ascendant. So kudos to them for recognizing that. Some optimization improvements, bug fixes to the UI. This one's noteworthy right here. They addressed an issue where Bunny's light emission was used even if there was no moving distance when rolling over a box or wall. So here's the director's comments on this. They say this, we love how Bunny runs fast, unleashes electric energy to take down her enemies. Bunny is a descendant who gains her power in proportion to the distance she travels. However, rolling around in a corner and using her skills was not what we expected from her, so we decided to fix this. Additionally, we are detecting the use of various macros and unauthorized programs through our monitoring systems, including the rolling in place macro. We're currently taking actions against macros and unauthorized programs and will continue to strive to create a more enjoyable gaming environment for everyone. So if you're one of those bunny users that think you're gonna get away with it, you have been warned, do not get banned because they are not afraid, again, to issue those bans to those that are using third party applications that are just not allowed whatsoever. And then they did do some updates to modules and missions as well. Check it out right here. It says modules, they address an issue where the Arch acceleration module did not increase the speed and distance of projectiles. So various fixes here. You guys can pause the screen. And then they do have some director's comments when it comes to addressing an issue where monsters would spawn even without an actual battle in the White Knight Gulch Fortress outskirts. So what they have to say, the fortress outskirts have become a popular farming area with many monsters pouring in from the beginning of launch. We love the run and kill play and believe running, shooting, and bursting are the fundamental aspects of a looter shooter. However, using the terrain to exploit and gather monsters without any action was not what we intended. If everyone simply stood still and hunted, the game's enjoyment would quickly diminish. Therefore, we decided to make a change. We maintain the spawn rate by keeping the four Volgus resource storages 
active simultaneously, but monsters will not increase when players are idle. Run, shoot, and create some explosions. Many more monsters, monsters will continue to appear. Once again, I think they're trying to do away with anyone that is trying to AFK. Now, also, we have this right here. New director's comments about the future of what's happening. So it says, thanks to the love and interest that you have shown us, we feel the brimming energy of the community. Hotfix 1.03 includes many fixes, which we hope will improve your gaming experience. Recently, we saw a video in the community where the Colossus was defeated more quickly through module switching. If we had a bit more time, we would have liked to include a fix for this in Hotfix 1.3. But unfortunately, it didn't make it into this update. Now, the dev team does not want module switching to become another strategy. This method makes combat tedious and does not fit well with the run and gun play style. The dev team wants skills, weapons, modules, and external components to be part of this strategy. We hope that in-depth build research will progress, but strategy requiring inconvenient control are not what the development team aims for. Last but not least, we are planning to skip the patch next week for the upcoming fifth week update on August 1st. Please look forward to the new Descendant Luna and Ultimate Valdi, new Intercept Battles, new Ultimate Weapons, Modules, and External Components and Skins on August 1st. So that is the plan going forward. So yeah, sounds like uh, they know what they're doing so far. And I think overall the community is extremely happy with a lot of the updates that keep rolling out for the first Descendant. I know I am. It's good to know that they aren't nerfing things. They're actually fixing bugs instead of like outright nerfing things. And they aren't rushing anything when it comes to vote to kick or severely punishing AFK farming. They are monitoring it. So I think uh, they may get a little bit more strict with it in the future. But they're also offering warnings to players like, hey, you know what? Participate in the game. Be an active participant in the missions. You know, you have to move around for monsters to spawn, that sort of thing. They really, really want people <laughs> moving around, actually engaging in the game instead of just standing there. All right, so now it's time to go over your top comments. Let me know what you guys think of the changes and the update. I may feature it in the next video, but let's do this. So the top comment is 200 hours for every ultimate LOL, 122 hours, and I can't even get the components to drop Freyna. Damn! 296 upvotes. It seems like a lot of you guys are still struggling with that one. And, you know, the development team has been pretty quiet about that. So we'll have to see if they comment on that one or not. But also we have me as Ajax main. What's wrong with taking every bullet from the boss while I stand still and hold down trigger on my tamer for five minutes until the boss is dead? A lot of you guys seem like you're enjoying the game playing that way as an Ajax main. Then we have Mickey, who says, only issue I have with the game is extreme lock-on and tracking through walls by AI. Yeah, it seems like an issue. Hopefully we hear from the dev team on that front. It says, when we die, we don't respond this in the middle of the mob, then walks over us or make us invincible for a few seconds so we can escape. Yeah, they need some sort of spawn immunity, at least temporarily, when you are back in battle initially so that you just don't immediately go down. I've been seeing so many threads about that one for sure. Then it says, on Thunder Cage, as an ability character like Viesa, for example, use your skills halfway through the reload instead of rolling. Weaving spells into your gun loop increases your DPS by a lot. This is such an excellent tip, and I have begun doing this more and more. It's like I have to be reminded, you know? Uh, but rolling is also another way to cancel that out just in case if you did not know. But if you use those two things in tandem, man, you guys can really absolutely, you know, reduce that reload time. All right, so there it is. The latest happenings around the first Ascendant. What a great update. So far, this game is on a very good path. We'll see how it goes in the long term. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned here for more, and I will see you all next time. Take care.